we are in the midst of a discipleship crisis uh, here in the United States, and so the question is, what do we do? Um, and I think the, the first thing that we do is we start with what Jesus said we should do, which is we follow the fruit. Uh, and I think there are two types of fruit predominantly that we're seeing in the American church right now. Uh, the first one is that we see rotten fruit. Um, so if you just take two minutes online, go to your social media of choice, you're going to find Facebook's on fire. Uh, and it is littered with comments from people who call themselves Christians whose lives do not look much like the life and the character of Jesus Christ. But we also have seedless fruits. And what that means is there are Christians whose lives are being wildly transformed, whose lives are full of the fruit of the Spirit, but they are not producing more disciples. Now, I think this is a little reductive, but I think there is one significant factor in this crisis that is always present, but it's rarely seen. What most churches have done is that they have imported someone else's discipleship strategy or small group model that worked somewhere else. They brought it into their thing and it never quite took. So it's great that it worked for Andy Stanley in Atlanta, but for I don't know, like First Church of Awesome in Milwaukee. Like, it's, it's, those are really different contexts. And so that's why we created the Disciple Making Innovation Lab. So in the lab, churches are going to create a custom-made discipleship model that is tailored to their church's unique DNA. So it's going to be their mission, their values, their theology, their context, their convictions, and what it's going to do from the very beginning is it's going to take those things and it's going to design that model for both transformation and reproduction. So just practically, this is what it looks like. We get eight churches together and we form a cohort. And we walk together through this 12-month process for uh, a 12-month and one year is, the, is redundant. This innovation process, what it, what it does is it takes the seed of reproduction and the seed of transformation, and then it drops it in the unique soil of that church. And what churches walk away with is a homegrown model that looks like them, smells like them, breathes like them. And what, what we're seeing is that re the results are starting to speak for themselves. So the first beta that we started, it started with six people. And seven years later, and seven generations of disciple makers later, those six people turn into 4,500 people, and 41% of them were new Christians. That's what happened to my wife and I. So I think one of the things that's important to understand, this isn't like abstract theory. This is actually for us, this is coming out of like the soil and the texture of our home and our family. So at Catapult, what we've done is we've now run four betas in the last five years, and we've worked with mega churches, church plants, rural churches, city churches, everything in between. And we've got another cohort that's starting this fall. So Don Coleman's church went from 50% of average small group attendance to 150% in two years. And one of the things that they've seen is four generations of disciple makers. And I think we, we probably all know enough to know that with, when it comes to creating a discipling culture, there are ripple effects. And so after one year in the lab, Johnny Pereira and his church saw a 45% increase in giving, and they have three church planning residents. So our vision is that in 10 years, there will be 25 American cities and five rural communities that are experiencing a homegrown disciple-making movement. And like me, you probably know that when you see that sort of stuff happen, church planting almost always follows. So what we need to do now is we need to scale it. So what we want to do is we want to give the lab to some of the most influential networks, collectives, and denominations so that they can lead it for themselves. There's a chance that if you're in this room, you might be leading one of those. Um, and so the, the thing that we want you to think about is what would it look like if even 16% of the churches that you are serving were on the pathway to generational disciple-making from the harvest? That, my friends, is a game-changer. So as you consider investing in our innovation lab, I want to ask you just to do one thing. I want you to watch our two-minute explainer video that we've created to illustrate our process. So all you have to do is you can come to our booth or you can come to our Q&A. We've got QR codes that we'll pass out for everyone like candy on Halloween. So Dallas Willard said every church needs to be able to answer two questions. Number one, what's our plan for making disciples? And number two, does our plan work? 
We need to innovate American discipleship because it hasn't worked in a while. Rather than rotten fruit or seedless fruit, we need something that produces healthy fruit with orchard potential. We finally got something that works. Will you help us scale it? Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Doug.